Welcome back to another video everyone. Today I think I might have found my next stock that I'm going to invest in. Okay, this company is called STEM and right now it trades under the ticker symbol STPK, Star Peak Energy Transition Corp. And this company will reverse merge with STEM and therefore trade on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol STEM once the merger goes through, which is expected to happen in the first quarter of 2021, okay? And this is a play in the renewable energy sector, okay? Um, and I'm just about to hit that button to buy this stock, despite even a massive run-up of about like 100%, which is honestly pretty common seen in some of these renewable energy company, okay? And part of the massive hype and part of the reason why I'm very interested in this company, why I don't necessarily think it's uh, very, very overvalued despite this run-up is, well, one, we know that we have Joe Biden coming in as president, okay? And he calls climate change the number one issue facing humanity, okay? And he vowed a national transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy and decarbonization, okay? And he specifically has a $2 trillion plan that puts the U.S. on a path to zero carbon pollution from the electricity sector by 2035 and a net zero emissions by 2050. And now hopefully, since um, the Democrats have a bit of a Senate majority, they'll be better able to pass laws that actually enact this uh, plan, okay? Um, which was my main concern going forward, okay? But it does look like companies like these are going to be the new face of renewable energy, okay? And I'm excited specifically about this company because it claims to be the number one player in the energy storage space. All right, we're going to go over their investor presentation to talk a bit more about this, okay? So, I mean, be wary of this huge run-up in stock. I might actually wait for a bit before I buy in into the dip. Um, but, you know, let's get right ahead into uh, into the investor presentation. And uh, first, I just want to start off, what is this company in general? So if you go on to, there's a video that talks, you can just search up John Carrington on STEM SPAC merger. John Carrington is actually the CEO and founder. He seems very uh, sharp and with it. Um, and so pretty much they provide clean energy battery solutions that allow customers to reduce energy costs, reduce carbon emissions, and provide greater reliability for the grid. Okay, and I was, uh, and they do that by proprietary AI-driven software platform, right? So we, we're talking about software as a service, and they call their uh, platform Athena, okay? Uh, so it's like integrating software and artificial intelligence to the whole uh, energy crisis and to bring in the renewable energy platform, okay? Um, and I think, again, this is very attractive because it provides a high margin solution to uh, more of like a low margin environment, such as like the hardware um, needed to bring energy transition, right? Such as uh, EV charging stations and even building EV cars, okay? So this software as a service provides higher margin profits for companies like uh, STEM, okay? Um, and when they talk about greater reliability for the grid, that means, again, this is similar to what I was talking about when I was talking about NUV, uh, which is going to go public via NBAC, Newborn Acquisition Corp, where they're trying to stabilize the grid um, so that when everyone charges their EVs at once, that actually uh, causes a huge increase in the price of electricity, especially during on peaks. Um, and so to reduce that volatility and back and of course, uh, STEM is sort of trying to decrease that and do something um, for that energy solution system, okay? So again, let's take a look at their uh, investment presentation and I definitely encourage you before you make any investments to look into this company and look into their investor presentations which is offered uh, on their site, okay? So this business was actually founded in 2009 um, and again, it's a leading AI driven storage solutions business. Okay. Here we can see the board of directors, um, and some of their investors. Okay. Including general electric. All right. And if we're continuing down, so their vision is again, smart storage. And they're saying that that is key to global decarbonization. Okay. Um, and they're saying 90% of new interconnection requests were renewable and or storage, but renewable generation suffer from intermittency, uh, of course. And so again, what they're saying is that they need to store the energy that they get from the sun. Um, and that's the solution that they're trying to provide, okay? So battery optimization is also difficult. 
Energy intelligence amplifies performance by anticipating demand cycles, energy prices, uh, generation profile, and other factors in real time, okay? So uh, again, if you want, you can pause here and read this slide here. Um, one of the main things here is, again, they expect 1.2 trillion network and new revenue opportunities for integrated storage, and that's expected to be deployed by 2050, okay? Uh, and again, battery storage capacity is expected to increase by 25 times by just 2030, all right? Um, and again, what they're doing is they're combining hardware with software, okay? And again, that's what I'm talking about where, you know, the hardware is more capital intensive, whereas the software is capital intensive upfront, but then after, margins just increase drastically, okay? Um, and again, it's the leading leading player in this space, okay? So what they're saying is there's 1.2 trillion market opportunity here, okay, for the expected transition to um, battery tech and online uh, growth of software as a service companies like STEM, okay? So again, you can pause this here, but they're saying that, of course, there's going to be the cost of making these batteries and software is going to go down, um, whereas the capacity for growth in this uh, industry is going to go up, okay? And one thing I like about this is that this graph here points to them being a market leader in the energy storage space, okay? So storage capacity commission in terms of megawatts uh, is STEM that beats by uh, 600 megawatts compared to all these other companies such as Tesla, Hyundai, uh, et cetera, okay? So you can pause this graph and look over here. Um, and this shows that they are one of the main market leaders, if not the market leader, in their storage capacity, okay? Um, and it sort of operates in a system like Slack where it has many sort of customers and integrated solutions with something like Amazon, Apple, uh, Adobe, et cetera, okay? Which we're going to look over. All right, uh, and it talks about their um, exponential growth, accelerating growth, uh, their data integration, but I want to move on to what exactly they provide and the sectors that they provide. So in white here is all the services that they currently provide, okay? And they don't provide voltage support and uh, black start. I'm not sure what that is, but um, so what they offer is customer services um, as well as virtual power plant and FPM services uh, such as energy arbitrage, right? Like buying when it's low power and selling when it's high power. Uh, and as well as utility services. So these, they're able to monetize 11 out of the 13 identified energy storage value streams, okay? Uh, which is, again, very, very important. And, and as more people are transitioning into EVs, uh, into renewables, this will become increasingly more important, okay? Uh, all these sectors here. All right, and finally, I want to talk about um, their growth projections, okay? So one, they're expected to have 1.1 billion in revenue by 2026 uh, whereas they already have about like 33 million in 2020 uh, and that's just again ex exponential annualized growth okay uh, and 81 percent compounded annual growth rate expected to be from 2020 to 2026 okay um, as well as you know the, by software type again you can pause here and again uh, gross margins are expected to increase with increasing scale and software growth, right? Again, we've talked about uh, before about software as a service. Um, for example, like Avepoint is providing, which is another SPAC that I own, uh, and it already has customers, it already has repeating revenue growth, which is one thing that I really, really like about uh, this company as well, okay? It combines hardware with software, all right? Uh, and of course, software gross margins increase much more than hardware gross margins, as I've talked about before, all right? Uh, but they're expected to, in general, blended gross margin is expected to increase to 41% by 2026, which means more revenue is coming straight to the bottom line, okay? Um, and let's say here, right here, we can see revenue year on year growth. So 33 million expected for 2020, that's a 94% revenue year over year growth. 2021 expected to do 147 million, which is 348% revenue growth, uh, and all the way to... 2026, they're expected to do $1.1 billion in revenue growth, okay? So double-digit revenue growth all across the board, um, as well as gross margins, right? We can see right now they're expected to do 39%, sorry, 12% in gross margin compared to 41% in gross margin in 2026, okay? So again, more of that revenue is going straight to the net income, straight to the bottom line, okay? 
Um, and one thing you have to be concerned about is if you invest in Star Peak Energy, which is a SPAC merging with STEM, how much of that is actually going to be transitioning into uh, your ownership of the final company, the STEM company, once it trades publicly. Okay, and so as you can see here, um, Star Peak public shareholders represent a 28.3% ownership in the final company, which is, you know, more than I've seen of some other companies. Uh, and it's just useful to know. And right now, of course, based on their price right now, it is quite significantly, you're definitely trading this at a premium as to what it's valued at right now uh, on on the pro forma ownership at $10 a share. Um, but still, I just don't see this going anywhere but up for the next couple of years, especially with the Biden plan and the Biden transition, okay? And again, it gives you just some value uh, on, on the revenue growth, gross margins and EBITDA margins compared to the median, okay, here. So um, it significantly outperforms the peers in all of these areas and uh, as well as their enterprise value to revenue growth is, is uh, better than comparable peers, okay? And finally, I just want to say, uh, their lineup of customers, again, like Apple, Amazon, Google, um, Tesla, you know, stuff like that. STEM can be incorporated into all of these businesses either as they're going more green. And I believe that represents a significant opportunity for them to be, again, the number one player in the or energy storage solutions, especially with their software that they're developing. Okay, so, uh, you know, definitely add this to wa your watch list if you haven't already. Let me know what you think of Starpeak Energy Transition Corp and also STEM. Uh, and let me know if you're going to be buying this stock or if you already own this stock. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this. As we can see, now it's already up by 19% on the day. Uh, so we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, hopefully there's a bit of a pullback where I'll be able to invest into this stock. Okay, so cheers and I'll see you next time.